Hello and welcome to this edition of the Airport News Show, a half-hour informational program about the Jacksonville Aviation Authority. I'm Debbie Jones, Community Relations Administrator. On today's program, we're talking about an exciting event coming soon to Cecil Field. And I've got a very special guest that's going to fill us in on all the who, what's, where's, and why's, and that's Mr. David Dollarhide, who's the Operation manager mm -hmm. at Cecil Field, one of our four airports. Welcome, David. Thanks, Debbie. Well, before we talk about the specifics of the Cecil Field Air Fest, let's sort of give people an idea of what Cecil Field is and how it fits into the four airport system that the JAA owns and manages. Yeah, Cecil Field, as you know, uh, used to be a naval master jet base. and. Uh, a few years ago, it's, it turned into a public use airport, a general mm -hmm. aviation airport. So what uh, most of the tenants do out there are maintenance, repair, and overhaul of large and jet aircraft. Uh, mm -hmm. We still have a lot of military presence there. Um, it's based to Coast Guard unit, Army National Guard unit, uh, U.S. Customs. And uh, again, a lot, of, a lot of military aircraft maintenance goes on there. Now, because it was a former master air base, We've got some pretty significant runways there. Can you give us a rundown of the Sure. Runways? We've got uh, we've got four large runways. Um, three of them are 8,000 feet long, which would be pretty long at most airports, but we also have a runway that's 12,500 feet long. Pretty much any aircraft could land there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the second longest in Florida, second only to the uh, space shuttle landing facility. Right. Now, the Cecil Field is one of three general aviation airports. Yes. So how is that different, general aviation versus what Jacksonville International is? Sure. J JIA is a commercial airport, so they have scheduled airline services and cargo. Mm -hmm. uh, the general aviation caters to private pilots, uh, corporate pilots, military, any, anyone who would like to land there. Uh, just calls the control tower and and it's it's free for an, anybody to use, but there there is no scheduled aircraft service at Cecil Field. Right. Okay. Well, thank you for that background sure. on Cecil Field. So let's jump into this event that's coming up May third. Mm -hmm. So it's coming really fast. Yeah, it'll be so, here soon. Yes, it um, will. So tell us a little bit about Cecil Field Air Fest. This will be the second year we're doing it at Cecil Field. Mm -hmm. Last year was was very successful. We had three or four thousand people attend. Um, it's an aircraft static display show. We have some limited flight demonstrations uh, by various tenants and, and local aircraft. Uh, there's also going to be cars on display, motorcycles. We'll have mm -hmm. food vendors, uh, local vendors, and uh, chain restaurants providing food. And we'll have a kid zone mm -hmm. with some, you know, four or five inflatable bouncy activities and right. slides. Uh, that, that was pretty popular last year, so we're hoping to have at least as many people this year, maybe more, mm -hmm. and uh, it's going to be a good time. Now, like last year, there's a, a, another special event that, that's part of the Air Fest, can, and we're going to talk about that more in the next segment, could, but can you just briefly sure. mention the, what else is going on? The Jacksonville Aviation Authority is partnered with a company called Fly Drive Ride for MS Inc., and they raise money for multiple sclerosis, and mm -hmm. it's run by uh, Miss Jane Estes. And uh, last year they raised a lot of money. She's going to tell you all about right. it, but uh, we're going to do that again. We hope to do it every year from, from now on. So the proceeds of the event actually will go towards MS Research. The, the proceeds from the food sales, mm -hmm. uh, Kid Zone, and all of the fundraising activities that they do, including the motorcycle poker run, will all raise money for MS. Right, and we'll, like we mentioned, we'll have more yeah. details so people need to stay tuned sure. so they can hear about that. But let's talk some more about the actual air fest. What's different between an air mm. fest and an air show? At an air show, you basically, uh, typically you'd have uh, aerobatic performers, like the Blue Angels, Thunderbirds, things like that. Uh, we're not going to have an aerobatic waiver, which allows us to to fly like that, but we're, we're going to have some flybys of, of local aircraft, some classic and warbird aircraft, as well as experimentals. Uh, we're got, we'll have skydivers. Um, last year, the Coast Guard put on a good demonstration as well. So, um, you know, we we will have some flight demonstrations. It just won't be a full-blown air show. Right. Eventually, we'd like to. In a few years, it may become that. Right. And we'll be able to to uh, attract the bigger names. Right. So you mentioned some static displays. Mm -hmm. 
can you be a little more specific of the different groups that are actually going to be out there with sure. their can, aircraft? I've got some, uh, sure. some Let's pictures here. Go on here and look. These are some aircraft that uh, attended last year, and the, the Chinook helicopter there is from the, the Army Guard unit based at Cecil Field. And the Yak-52 there is a, is a classic old warbird, and there's lots of, lots of guys locally, especially at Hurlong Airport and Craig Airport, Fernandina, I believe mm -hmm. that one is from. Uh, there, there'll be several, several aircraft like that. Um, some other warbirds, classic aircraft, uh, experimentals. There's another one that's called a, a, a Nanchang. This uh, FedEx 727 is, is based at Cecil Field, and it's owned by FCCJ's Aviation Maintenance School. And it was donated to them by FedEx. And so the, the maintenance students get to operate all the systems on that aircraft. It doesn't fly, but uh, they get hands-on experience you know, on, a, on an airline, on a transport category aircraft. This is another 727 we have, which is owned by the Jacksonville Aviation Authority Police Department for mm -hmm. training, uh, for emergency response training, terrorism type activities. And uh, this will be available. You can see the stairs down on the uh, tail there. People will be able to walk through this and see what the cockpit and cabin looks like if they've oh, never nice. experienced that. Mm -hmm. This is a Coast Guard Augusta helicopter. Uh, the Hitron 10 unit out there has newer helicopters now, so uh, they'll be able to see those. This is another Army National Guard helicopter, H-60 Blackhawk. And this is actually my dad's aircraft. There'll be a lot of um, experimental aircraft like this one. This is an, a Vans RV-4. And uh, there's going to be a lot of these uh, aircraft that, that guys have built uh, at their house. And uh, it's, the Experimental Aircraft Association is going to be helping us out quite a bit uh, at the event. There's, okay. there's a couple chapters here in town. One is based at Cecil Field. And all these guys get together, talk about the airplanes, you know, help each other maintain them. And uh, my dad's chapter is located at uh, Haller Air Park in Green Cove Springs. So mm -hmm. these guys are all going to get together. Uh, they're going to give rides to kids. There's, okay. a, there's a national program called the EAA Young Eagles. And the, uh, the chairman is Harrison Ford. So local guys with aircraft um, give kids free rides. They, they donate their, their aircraft and time and, and fuel to give kids rides to, so they can experience um, you know, their first flight, get them interested in, in flying or aviation in general. And it's available for kids 8 to 17 years old. OK, so for those who want to go on an airplane ride in, with the EAA, mm -hmm. Experimental Aircraft Association, <clears throat> they have to be between the ages of what? 8, eight, eight years old and 17. OK, and it will be free. It is free, yeah. And what time of day is there? Is it going to be all day? The event runs from? From 9 to 5. Uh, the actual Young Eagles rides will probably only take place for a couple hours, uh, probably in the morning. Typically, the air's a little smoother. It'll be nicer mm -hmm. to fly. So they won't be able to do it all day. But two or three hours is what they've committed to. And I think the, the chapters are going to try to attract a lot of kids ahead of time to come out to sign up you know, ahead of time. Right. But any, any child who comes out to the Air Fest, you know, if there's time available, we'll be able to, uh, to get a free ride. But come early. Come early. And your chances are better. Yes. Right? It, it'll be a 15-minute ride. It, it, wow. It's, uh, it's, it's a very popular program. Mm -hmm. It's really, really beneficial for kids to get involved in aviation. Now, besides just coming and signing up there, did you say that they were able to sign up ahead of time through some of the local chapters? You may be able to. The, the, the okay. presidents of the, the two local chapters are going to try to attract some kids ahead of okay. time uh, through their connections. And um, it's possible. I don't know for sure yet, but last year we had some of the local flight schools provide airplane rides. Right, I remember that. Uh, for anybody, mm -hmm. it, and they, they were $25 for a 15-minute ride. We may do that this year. We haven't decided 100% right. yet. So. But you got to come out. you got to come out to, to see what's going on. So talk to us about the uh, price. What does it cost to come to the AirFest? It's free admission. Free admission? Yes, what about parking? Parking is free. OK. And the one difference this year, if, if, if you came last year, the main entrance to the event is going to be at the base of the control tower at our administration okay. building. Mm -hmm. uh, last year it was on the west, west side of the field. Right. Um, and we'll have signs from 103rd and Normandy directing you 
down Aviation Avenue and New World Avenue to the to the main entrance and the parking area. But parking's free. It's going to be all out in front of the the main terminal there where our offices are, mm -hmm. and uh, it'll be pretty clear where the where the entrance is. And besides the food vendors and such, you mentioned the kids zone. It, it, of course, people will buy their food and mm -hmm. such, but is there any cost for the kids zone? Last year we charged one dollar per okay. per event uh, per kid, so, and, and it was very successful. You know, right. it's, it didn't cost too much. But uh, I think we're going to do the same thing this this year. One dollar per per event. Right, and once again, that's because it's all going towards sure. MS Research. Yes, it's a fundraiser mm -hmm. for that. Okay, well. Looking back on last year, what were some of the, I know you changed where you want the location to right. be. How many people did we have last year and what is the expectation for this year and did that have any bearing in changing the location of, entra of the entrance? Not so much. Uh, there, we, we had a, approximately 4,000 people we figured last year. Uh, we'd like to have at least that or more this, this time. Mm -hmm. uh, as a coordinator, my biggest regret was just spreading out the event too much last last mm -hmm. time, and there, there was reasons we did that. But it was it, the uh, where the aircraft were parked mm -hmm. were in two two separate areas. This time, it's going to be a lot more cozy. It's all going to be consolidated in one big area, oh, right at the control tower. Um, but uh, er, it, everything will be a lot closer together, and I think it'll be a you know much more successful in that manner. Right, and I, I was there, and I was at the end of the row, <laughs> the yeah, far end, so it was a it was little a bit of a walk, walk. Yeah. but there was so much to see, so. Sure. We, had, we had plenty to do, but I think uh, all of the food vendors and uh, different aviation vendors we're going to have are going to kind of fill in the, the gaps, and uh, it's going to be, it's going to be nice. Right, now we just need a really nice day. Yeah, we sure. had, uh, we had approximately 70 aircraft come last time, mm -hmm. and we're going to have at least that this time as well. Right. Military. Uh, experimental, classic, and war birds, and all that. Okay, so. so people need to come early, especially sure. those if they have children between the ages of eight and seventeen. Eight and for seventeen the, for the young eagles rides. For the young eagles, which are free, mm -hmm. and there might be some rides that you can pay for. It's possible. Yeah. It's possible, it's but not, otherwise, not confirmed yet. Yeah. A lot of demonstrations, and I remember one of those demonstrations was one of the helicopters, and it was incredible what they were doing. They had very cool. one of those cones that you see in the streets, and they were just flipping it up and down and yeah, doing all kinds of things. Yeah, we're to get him again as well. He, he's a local guy with a Robinson helicopter, and he he does some pretty neat things, um, pushing that cone around with his with his skid. The, the other the other difference is last year we had two demonstration periods. This time we're just going to have one, mm -hmm. probably around lunchtime, so around lunchtime. more people see it. Let allow people to get there, and uh, it'll be a little more organized this time. And then in between, before and after, there'll be lots of activities and vendors and food and things to enjoy, lots and to the do. static displays to watch as sure. well. Brief rundown: When is it, and when? Saturday, May nineteenth. I'm sorry, <laughs> that was last year. Saturday, May third, from nine to five at Cecil Field, which is on the west side of town. Very good. Saturday, May third. third at Cecil Field. Be there. You don't want to miss it. Stay right here. When we come back, we'll talk more about the MS research. Experts predict that by the end of this century, land and water resources will become scarce, and climate change will irreversibly alter our planet. But what the experts haven't calculated is the power of the human will to come together protect the future of our natural world. You can help make a difference that lasts by joining the Nature Conservancy. Visit nature.org today. Hello and welcome back to this edition of the Airport News Show. On today's program, we're talking about a special event coming to Cecil Field Saturday, May 3rd of this year. From 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., you can come out and enjoy an exciting air fest. The first half of the show, we talked about some of the logistics of having an air fest and what you're going to see out at Cecil Field. This segment, I want to introduce those who are a part of the fundraiser segment of the air fest, and that is going to be MS Research is going to be benefiting from the proceeds of that event. And so let me start off by introducing my guests here. Right here is Jane Estes, who is the founder and co-chair of Fly, Drive, and Ride for MS Research. 
Research. Welcome, Jane. Oh, thank you for having us. Nice to see you again. And next to her is Jackie Carino, who is the Program Manager for the National MS Society. Welcome. Thank you very much. So glad you could be here. And finally, Miss Kelly Christ, who is a MS Ambassador. Thank you for Welcome. having me. Welcome. Well, we, like I mentioned, the first half we talked about the show, the Air Fest itself, not show. It's not an air <laughs> show, it's an Air Fest. And so let's talk about MS research and to give people kind of a background, what is MS and how does this event working through the National Society benefit those people in this area with, with MS. And Jane, you want to get that started? Well, <laughs> while I do have MS and found out about it 15 years ago, mm -hmm. um, I think I'll let my, the experts here <laughs> discuss okay. that and I'll do the, I'll do the, uh, the fundraiser part. Well, okay, perfect. Um, um, multiple sclerosis is a disease of the central nervous system which mm -hmm. consists of the brain, the spinal cord, and optic neuritis. Um, in probably the easiest terms to, to explain MS, it's basically um, signals from the brain to the rest of the part of the body can get disturbed. And okay. so what, what can occur is different symptoms of MS. Probably the most common is fatigue. Mm -hmm. Not just you're tired, it, it's just a really internal fatigue. Um, numbness and tingling, um, a spasticity where it feels tightening around any part of your limb, especially your stomach area. Um, and as I mentioned before, optic um, nerves, so sometimes um, your vision could get blurred, or you can see double vision. Um, mm -hmm. Those are probably the most common symptoms. And then they can get a little bit more severe as, as the disease progresses in somebody. Right, now Kelly, you were recently, when were you diagnosed with I was MS? diagnosed in 2000. It was my millennium gift to myself. So oh. um, May will make my anniversary, it will be eight years. Eight years, mm -hmm. you're so young. Yes. Um, it's Actually, a lot of people are being diagnosed even younger now. Um, really? I have a friend. Uh, through the chapter that I've met that is 13, 13. diagnosed. Mm -hmm. Now is that, based on MS, is that common for this disease to strike young people? It's not an adult disease, evidently. It's common to um, be diagnosed with MS during the prime of your life. It's a prime of the life disease. Uh, typically more women than we uh, men. Mm -hmm. Two-thirds of the people that have MS are female. Um, and it's not uncommon to be prime of your life. You're starting your career, having your family, and hello. Oh, wow. I can't walk this morning. Oh. Or I can't see this morning. So. And I think with the research and the knowledge that they're gaining about MS, they're able to diagnose people younger and younger. I think more in the past, they didn't realize or didn't have the tools Absolutely. to be able to diagnose mm -hmm. younger people. Right. So because yeah. the symptoms were presenting, people weren't making the connection or the physicians were not making the connection that it could be Absolutely. MS. Absolutely. I had a, um, probably an exacerbation four years prior to actually being diagnosed and yeah. they said it was a pinched nerve. Um, and then when they did the MRI four years later, they were like, you have MS. I said, well, I've probably had it for some time now. Mm -hmm. And that would have been, um, I would have been 19, so. Wow, Typically, that's incredible. Yeah, they, with the research and the way it's developing, people are starting to realize much sooner. And so because the research and they're able to diagnose sooner, is that beneficial for those who have MS? Absolutely, um, the number one thing that the MS Society, um, our biggest stance is, when you're diagnosed with MS, um, to get on a treatment, there's there's six FDA-approved treatments for MS, and mm -hmm. um, they all work a little a little bit differently. So you work with your healthcare professional, but it's been proven all of them to slow the pro the progression of the disease down. So the sooner you know that you have MS, the more you can you know make a choice to decide what drug therapy you'd like to be on and be able to manage the symptoms. Mm -hmm. So you say it slows the progression down. Does mm -hmm. that mean there's no cure? Currently, there's no cure, uh -huh. and that's exactly um, why we do fundraising events such as um, Fly Drive Ride to raise money for research. Okay. What type of services does the Society for MS or MS Society mm -hmm. provide for folks like Kelly sure. and Jane? Sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, probably our number one per, um, service that we provide is information and referral. Mm -hmm. So, if somebody newly diagnosed, for instance, um, or a family member ha doesn't have any idea what MS is, they can call. Um, the call, call the MS Society and we'll be help, ha, um, happy to explain what MS is to them. As well as um, referral, some people need a neurologist. They don't, they've never th had a neurologist mm -hmm. and so 
We'll give them referrals, maybe home health care services, different things like that. We also do in-person education programs where we mm -hmm. invite um, guest speakers on a variety of topics, uh, such as cognition or maybe symptom management, um, to, to present um, on their level, as well as um, we have a lending library full of information for people. So anytime you need information, it's called the chapter, our website as well. And we have peer support, I think is a really great service we provide as well. We have um, trained volunteers all across the area that um, run support groups. So at any time you want to talk to somebody with MS, they're available. Is there any, you mentioned peer support. What about for families of those with MS? Are there any assistance vehicles for those folks as Absolutely. well? Absolutely. I mean, one of our, um, we, we do a family program every year to celebrate, and it's more of a social program. We go to the Jacksonville Zoo to just to celebrate families as well as um, we'll do more in person. And for families, we do have support groups. They're welcome to all our support groups. And anytime they have questions, and they just, we're here for MS, for people with MS and their families. So how important is fundraising to MS? Is this where you get all the funding or some of it? What yes, does we are, fundraising mean? We absolutely, um, we don't have any um, federal funding. So we are 100% driven by our special events. And what are some of those special events that you, you do you have normal special we events? We do. Our, probably our biggest one is our Bike MS, which is coming up um, September 20th, I believe. Okay. And that's where we have um, about 2,000 um, cyclists ride from, on their bicycles, ride from St. Augustine down to Daytona and back. So it's a two-day ride. They cover a little over 100, no, about 150, 150. miles mm -hmm. um, in two days. And that raises the most money for us. And then we also have walks. Um, in the area. March um, 29th, the end of this month, is our um, Walk MS in Jacksonville at Friendship Park. Right. And on m Saturday, May 3rd, mm -hmm. there's going to be another event right. from 9 to 5, and it's part of the FDR Fly Drive Ride for MS. Mm -hmm. Jane, can you explain to us what that is and <laughs> where that comes from? Oh, that came from, I don't know, <laughs> but a year ago, uh, my husband came home with a motorcycle. And I'd been looking for some way to raise money for MS for a long time because I've been on the board. And I thought, well, you know, I've got to do something with this motorcycle. I can have a motorcycle ride. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of evolved in talking with Cecil Field. I thought maybe I could hold the gathering there or something. And Cecil Field said they were doing, doing the air fest. And David said, well, if you'll do all the work, you can have all the money. Mm -hmm. And so I said, sold, <laughs> not knowing how crazy. But last year was wonderful. Last mm -hmm. year, we gave uh, 22000 straight to MS Research. That's incredible. Because we're an all-volunteer group. Right, and, right. Uh, you know, it, so every last penny mm -hmm. that we net will go to research. And that's what I was really working towards, is mm -hmm. that the society does wonderful things helping people, mm -hmm. but I'd sure like to put them out of business. Just find exactly. a cure, yeah, and, exactly. and I think they'd like to be out of oh, business. They, yeah. They're <laughs> wonderful, yeah. but they need to go on to another disease. We need to cure <laughs> right, this one. So. Right. So, what the, I know you're going to have a special event. FDR obviously fly drive ride, so yeah. that sort of means you're going to have some vehicular activity right, going right. on. Can you explain what's going on this year? <laughs> this year, last year we tried to have a triple poker run with cars, planes, and motorcycles. Well, that was a little crazy. So yeah. this year it's going to be much more organized. A gentleman named Rick Martin with the Silver Backs Riding Club mm -hmm. came to us and said he wanted to help. And he is doing a wonderful job. He is setting up, it's going to be seven card stud poker ride. All right. And it will start at the Walmart on Beach Boulevard and end at Cecil Field. So it will be a, a seven-card stud poker ride. And you go to the different stops, get your playing cards, and in the end, the person with best hand wins the grand prize. Okay. Do we know what the grand prize is yet? Oh, I can't you tell gotta you. Come. Oh, you gotta come. You gotta come. It's a big come. one. It's a big one, You gotta one, come and do it. Now, it is. the Walmart on Beach Boulevard, is right. that the one by Hodges, which just recently opened up, or is that the one by San Pablo? Um, can I get back to you? It's yeah. on the website. Okay, it's and I think website. we've got the website. So there's right. the website on the right. screen. It so go the to the website. Yeah, they, they just opened that one. But you said it was at the beach. 
No, anyway. it's a, just on Beach Boulevard. On Beach Boulevard, mm, yes. okay. So yeah, 10, I, I'd have to look yeah. at my address. Yeah, so go to the website. There's yes. a website available yes. where you can get information about the event. Yeah. And so in addition to the the motorcycle ride, and and I guess people understand what a poker run yeah. is. Can you briefly well, explain what a poker uh, run is? <laughs> I think most motorcycles riders do understand uh -huh. the poker run. Okay. This will be the first one I've ever been on. Oh, but okay. it's you get a card to start with and then you go to these different places, pre-designated spots, and get another card and then by the time you have you go through to all the par you know, places, you'll have a hand of cards, just okay. like in poker. And the one uh, with the best hand? The one with the best hand, and I think there are, are rules in Seven Card Stud and how to do it, and those will all be posted okay. on our website, which will also have a link to the Silver ba uh, Silverbacks Riding Club website, because they are really doing a tremendous job helping us with this. Right. Now, you mentioned that you were able to net $22,000. That's awesome. Yeah, what so are your hopes or expectations for this year's event? Well, I, you know, I'm afraid to put any dollar signs uh -huh. on it. We have a number of things going on with, you know, the we have the children's things and we the food vendors are donating some money. And we're going to have a raffle, and the raffle was okay. particularly fun last year because we had so many items that we were pulling a, a number out of the hat all day long, and we're going to do that again. And some of those items were pretty some, unusual. Yes, they were. Um, for instance, this year, and I don't know if it's going to be in a separate la raffle all by itself or within the raffle that we're talking about, but we're going to have a ride in one of the Warbirds. Oh. Last year we had a ride in a MIG airplane. Yeah, so. a big jet. <laughs> <He did. laughs> High-powered MIG. <laughs> so, so we'll have the raffle, and that will be raising money. And um, I think I think you know we we've had some wonderful sponsors uh, in the past, and I believe they'll come back again this year um, because they were pleased with. I think they were pleased with it last year. Right, because last year was really the first time that this collaboration oh, took it was. place. It so. was, yes. Bubba Burgers will be there. They've been wonderful to mm -hmm. us. And so, we're, you know, that's, that's how we're raising the money. Well, so. good. So tell us once again when the event is. The event is May 3rd from 9 to 5. And on May 3rd, if you wish to participate in the poker run, uh, registration for the poker run is between 10 and 10.30 at the Walmart on Virginia Beach Boulevard. Okay. And ends, it ends at 2 o'clock at Cecil Field. Perfect. So it's a combination. So you've got a day full of activities at the Cecil Field Air Fest. Come out and support MS Research. We hope to see you there. And also, come back and join us for our next edition of Airport News Show. Thank you. the perfect pink outfit for her. The shirt, the skirt, everything about it is just right. Down to the adorable shoes and matching socks. She's picture perfect, right? Actually, the best thing you can give your child is the gift of two committed parents. The Florida Department of Children and Families believes that when you build a strong, healthy relationship, you give your child a chance for a better life. DCF, building stronger families.